Recovering Radial Nerve Palsy Radial nerve palsy results from acute trauma or compression of the radial nerve. The radial nerve originates from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. The radial nerve innervation. It starts by the posterior cord, which is splits into the axillary nerve and the radial nerve. It gives the triceps and the cutaneous branches. It gives the brachioradialis after that, followed by the wrist extensors. Then the radial nerve is split into the superficial sensory nerve and other branches that will include finger extensors. Injury to the radial nerve affects the function of the wrist and fingers differently depending on the area of injury. It can be high above the elbow or it can be low around and below the elbow. The radial nerve supplies the extensor muscles allowing for extension of the wrist and fingers. Here you can see some of the muscles innervated by the radial nerve. That's why high radial nerve palsy will cause wrist drop. It usually occurs from fractures of the distal third of the humeral shaft. The fracture may cause injury to the radial nerve, causing paralysis of the wrist and finger extensors. The patient will not be able to perform the hitchhike sign. Low radial nerve injury usually occurs from trauma around the elbow, affecting the finger and thumb extension. A high lesion, usually above the brachioradialis nerve, causes wrist drop and loss of finger extension. In patients with radial nerve palsy, recovery of the wrist and finger extension is estimated to be about 1 mm per day. The brachioradialis muscle is the first muscle to recover. It is difficult to test for the brachioradialis muscle clinically, but EMG is helpful in detecting early recovery in the brachioradialis muscle. Treatment. Explore in open humeral fracture, observation in closed fractures, order EMG and nerve studies three weeks after the injury. The brachioradialis muscle is the first muscle to recover. Repeat EMG if necessary. Radial nerve recovery occurs in about 85% of cases in approximately 4 to 5 months. Explore the nerve if there is no recovery. Tendon transfers may be needed if no signs of radial nerve recovery. Pornator tears to extensor carbioradialis previs is a basic transfer. Is splint the wrist in a cock up position and order physiotherapy. EMG the B waves are bad, the fibrillations are bad, the early large polyphasic is good. There are just born polyphasic motor unit activity. It is an early evidence of nerve regeneration. A good prognosis no P waves. No fibrillation in about three weeks after the injury, but you find there are large polyphasic waves at three to four weeks. The bad prognosis when there are small polyphasic units at six months after the injury. This is an example of a patient recovering completely from radial nerve palsy. The patient regained extension of the wrist and extension of the fingers. The patient was able to hitchhike. This is an example of a patient partially recovering from radial nerve injury. He can see recovery of the wrist extensors, but finger extensors are not yet recovered. This is an example of a radial nerve that's not yet recovered, but appears recovered. The patient appears to have finger extension. This is an inaccurate examination. With the wrist placed in extension, the patient cannot extend the fingers. That means the radial nerve did not 
recover. The patient cannot extend the fingers. All my videos and this video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.